Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 14th and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Bridge of high pressure out here, mainly dominating our weather, but we do have this weak system sliding across British Columbia today. It's going to try to bring some showers here across British Columbia and down towards the North Cascades of Washington, Northeast Washington, Idaho Panhandle, and some of Western Montana. We'll take a look at that here in a moment, but in the wake of that, we're going to warm up as we go through Wednesday and on in through Thursday. We'll show you some of that here in a moment and we'll take a look what is to come in the extended forecast looks like we might get some more troughing trying to cool us down as we go towards next weekend so taking a look at what we just saw in the infrared satellite imagery you can see how this ridge of high pressure kind of dominating things put that into motion and you can see what is swinging by today it's a fairly weak system here but it's going to kick off some thunderstorms for some locations not for seattle portland or southwest bc but across some of the higher terrain of british columbia and again northeast washington and you can kind of see how this ridge really gets amplified as we go on in through the day on wednesday then we we bring kind of another subtle system there across British Columbia towards the end of the week and we might start to cool things down a little bit there. We'll take a look at those temperatures and you can see another trough kind of swinging by in the eastern periphery of this ridge out here across the Pacific Ocean by the time we go on in towards next weekend. So if we take a look at where we are now, you can see the marine layer for the Washington, Oregon coast kind of creeping in the Chehalis Gap there down towards Olympia and maybe reaching out towards Tacoma. If I scroll back and forth, you can kind of see the motion of that as we go through the early morning hours. If we scroll back and forth yesterday, you can see, look at the fire kick up. This is the placer fire there across British Columbia. So that's kicking off some smoke. And... As the winds start to turn offshore here uh, the next couple of days, some of that smoke could get introduced back across the area. It's not expected to be too much, but it, you might see it in some of the sunsets here. And we'll take a look at that here in a moment as well actually starting right now so i put that into motion you can see that flare up again on the day today across some of the north cascades british columbia then you see how that kind of gets a little bit squirrely and starts to go from north to south and then eventually out of the northeast back across some of the puget sound region some of the cascades of washington oregon back across the portland metro so you might see some of that smoke here shouldn't be too heavy but you'll probably definitely see the tint of it in the sky as you go through the day on tuesday then we go back through wednesday and you see some of that smoke drifting around portions the eastern Washington kind of moving around as we have kind of that offshore component still ongoing. So take a look at today. If I put that into motion, you can see this precipitation kind of moving across British Columbia, just clipping the Washington Cascades there, northeast Washington, Idaho, Panhandle as that moves through on in through Tuesday. And then it gets out of our area here on Wednesday. And then another weak system, very weak there, moving some showers across the Rocky Mountains mainly as we go through Thursday. And then we go back to Friday, Saturday, maybe as we go towards the weekend here another one of those weak systems clipping us and that one may actually bring a little bit of measurable precipitation down towards places like seattle depending on how you know we'll take a look at how this trends over the next few days but that could bring a little bit of precipitation you see the cascades as well as we go through the upcoming weekend mossbacks rejoice some onshore flow will return so this is composite reflectivity again just kind of driving on the point today when you're up here across the Rocky Mountains, you could be getting some thunderstorms out of that activity there. And then that pushes off through Tuesday afternoon. Stronger storms across southwest Montana, portions of eastern Idaho, towards Yellowstone there as that system kicks through as we go through the day on Tuesday. Then you see we're going to ramp the, the temperatures and dry things out as we go through Wednesday. And this is all the way through the six-day forecast. You see look that for Seattle, a little bit of precipitation showing up. A little bit better across the Cascades there as well. And the bulk of the precipitation across the Rockies of British Columbia towards Alberta. Alberta and some of Montana there not that unusual for this time of year so two meter temperature anomaly check this out as we go through the day on wednesday look at this really warm southwest bc all the way down through western oregon warmer even than than eastern washington eastern british columbia as you can see the system kind of sliding down off to the east keeping us cooler than normal there and then we go through thursday friday we go towards the end of the week though and you see we start to get that onshore flow back and drop things down temperature wise as we go through the weekend so what is going on here so the the cause of our heat waves here in the Pacific Northwest is what is known as, as a thermal trough. When the ridge gets established over the area, you can kind of see the higher pressure going across British Columbia there, and you see this very subtle feature up the Washington coast there that turns the winds offshore. And as we go on into the, the day on Tuesday, you can see that subtle thermal trough there. You can imagine the winds kind of flowing back out of the Northeast, introducing whatever fire smoke is burning across British Columbia or the Washington Cascades back west of the Cascades for Southwest BC, Seattle, and for Portland. And then as we go on in towards the end of the week, you see we start to shift things up and you'll see the high pressure get a bit more dominant out over the Pacific Ocean and we start to return that onshore flow. Air wants to flow from high to low. 
Now, take a look at the winds there really quick. You can see we got the onshore flow still ongoing for the day today as that system moves by. But by the time we go to tomorrow, you can kind of see all things shift back out of the northeast. They turn northeasterly across the Columbia Basin there as well, across the Willamette Valley. You can see the north northeast wind coming down the coastline there at about 2,500 feet or about 20, 925 millibars is what we're looking at there. And as we go through the day on Wednesday, you still see we got that offshore flow ongoing. But then as we go towards the end of the week, we start to see things shift up as we go through Thursday night and on into Friday you see things start to return out of the northwest and out of the west you see the winds coming through what is known as the Strait of Juan de Fuca there and you can see the Chehalis Gap right there and east slopes of the Cascades start to return to some of those westerly winds as we go through the upcoming weekend so yeah it's kind of fun to look at our terrain features here as far as wind goes that's what causes a lot of our weather the convergent zone activity the gusty winds we get here as well but taking a look at the 10 highest recorded temperatures at Seattle Tacoma uh, International, I'm, I'm alive for nine out of these 10. The only one that makes the top 10 here that was before 1979 was back on August 8th, 1960. And this spike here, that is the June 28th, 108 degree day there a few years ago in 2021 for SeaTac. And the day before that was 104. The day before that was 102. So yeah, our, three of our warmest days here right in that span. And this one was back in 2009, July 29th, 103 degrees. That was that one right there. I remember that one pretty well as also. And the only other time we've hit 100 at SeaTac was on, uh, what was it, July 20th, 1994. I remember that when I was living on Kent East Hill. But you can kind of see our average temperature during the year here also, and our max temperatures and min temperatures there as well. And if you go back to that one, the min temperature there, zero degrees set back on January 31st, 1950. I don't know if we'll be hitting that one anytime soon. So take a look at what is to come here. This is Monday, July 14th. Uh, we're cooling things down a little bit here. Right? We were 88 degrees at my house here in Normandy Park, uh, just west of SeaTac Airport. But we are going to cool things down by almost 10 degrees. So that's going to feel kind of nice, but still a fairly nice day out there. But the heat returns tomorrow as we jack those temperatures back up. Some lower 90s showing up for southwest BC, some mid 90s for the Willamette Valley. We go to Wednesday here, and you can see the National Button Model showing SeaTac at a toasty 91 degrees there. That's not going to hit the all time daily record high or anything, but still quite warm. And the hot spot across the region is the Willamette Valley. I mean, look at that. Some of the temperatures may be approaching 100 degrees and for southwest Oregon 103 there and you can see we're not as warm here east of the mountains so we go to Thursday another very warm day across the area eastern Washington and some of the Treasure Valley there out there takes the cake for the heat as far as Thursday goes and there's Friday back to a more typical pattern there where eastern portions are warmer still quite warm across the Willamette Valley perhaps approaching 90 degrees and we go Saturday we start to kick that onshore flow back again and you see Seattle dropping into the 70s Look at that mid low 70s for Southwest BC. By the time we get towards Saturday, there's Sunday, Monday. You can see we're getting that onshore flow going again, but then maybe after that, we'll start to get a little bit of a warm up. Who knows? We'll worry about that later. Now, if we look at the artificial intelligence, a little bit of an extended outlook uh, a glance here you can see that we're, we've got this ridge uh, ramping up here across the Gulf of Alaska this is Tuesday afternoon we go through Wednesday ridge is still with us but this weak system kind of slides by to our north there and then we start to kick the onshore flow on a bit more as we go through this weekend ridge out here still across the Gulf of Alaska but a little bit too far away to really warm us up here across much of places west of the Cascades so we scroll on in through the weekend upcoming here and you can see the ridge just dominating the Gulf of Alaska, but we still have that northwest flow here that's going to keep things uh, a little bit, uh, you know, we're going to keep the temperatures from getting a little bit too warm, but you got to watch it here because if this ridge moves a little bit further east, that can really warm up uh, portions of the Pacific Northwest. And then check this fantasy forecast out here as we get this trough retaking over the Gulf of Alaska. Who knows if this is going to happen? I mean, uh, let me back that up and you see the development of that is still over 10 days out. So just something fun to watch off in the extended forecast. That'd be kind of an interesting system here. Uh, typically, uh, this is typically our warmest time of the year there as you get towards the end of July into early August for the region. So that would be kind of an unusual storm system there. But 
again, fantasy at this point. Now, European Ensemble mean. You can see places west of the Cascades here, southwest BC, western Washington, Oregon, below. But those systems riding down the eastern periphery of that ridge do bring above normal precipitation totals here over the next 15 days, according to the European Ensemble mean. This is just an average of all 50 Ensemble members. So we have a baseline where it was the initial conditions of the atmosphere, the best we understand them. Then we tweak those initial conditions for the other 50 members here and we let those just run out and see what they show us and then we take the mean of all of that and then we show you what kind of uh, weather we're expecting and you know over the 15 day period but yeah the ensemble mean of the european is usually the gold standard for this stuff i also like to check out the gfs ensemble mean it has 30 members and you can see it paints a similar picture here as we go over the next two plus weeks now this is the canadian also so let me make sure that is up to date it is uh, july 14th yeah and it shows a similar picture as well so uh, and now if we look at today uh, not the, this is not for today but this is july 16th so we're looking at record high so we're, we're probably going to get the low 90s for seattle but we're not going to break that all-time daily record high set back in 1979 of 98 degrees and also look at this one record precipitation for the month of july if you can believe it we've never gotten a day in the month of july at SeaTac airport that's recorded an inch of precipitation july is the only month to ever do so june's done it august has done it every other month has done it except for july and this is uh, the raw climate data here and you can see july 1st through july 31st and you can see the high precipitation amounts right there and again never hitting an inch but if you go down towards august you can see that we have hit an inch and also for june and winter goes without saying. So here's the updated since April 1st. Again, the Pacific Northwest above normal temperatures since April 1st. Widespread across the area. Just a few select areas just slightly below normal. And the precipitation outlook here since uh, April 1st has not been good. We are well below normal here across much of the region. Six to ten day. Just showing you because, uh, you know, I don't, I've not been agreeing with this. And the models haven't been as well with the Climate Prediction Center. But that makes sense, I guess, the six to ten day temperature outlook. But this above normal here for western washington and whatnot you can kind of throw that in the trash so anyway um working on my volcano video i just got back from hawaii a couple days ago had some fun out there saw some hybrid land spout action coming off all the heat from that volcano just a spectacular show the lava going up over 1200 feet into the air it was amazing the roar sounded like a jet engine off in the distance it was quite the show very fun stuff so i'm gonna might try to do it again here over the next couple of episodes there should be another one between july 16th and july 19th out there on the big island if you want to go to check it out once in a lifetime experience the the, the mountain has been um fountaining to these heights i guess since 19 the 1980s so it's been about 40 years here and it's been, and it continues to do so on about a, a seven to eight to nine day cycle so I, I, i'll miss the next one but i'm gonna try to catch the one after that on in through the end of july we'll see how that goes but yeah i'm working on a video on that i'll talk about uh some of the forecasting we did for the inflation patterns of the actual volcano itself and go over some fun stuff and i'll share my video with you as well so anyway um click like and subscribe we'll do this all again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then